Hello friends, welcome to Coding Garden, and welcome to this preview of my course, React Roots, which teaches the basics of building modern single page web applications with React and TypeScript. So if you visit reactroots.com, you can learn more, but if you click on this section, what will I learn in this course? You can see all of the lessons that are covered in the course, and specifically, you can click on lesson two, which is the preview that you're gonna see today. So lesson two is intro to TypeScript, and the two learning objectives that are gonna be covered in this preview are describe what TypeScript is and its relation to JavaScript, and describe the TypeScript build cycle. So I hope you enjoy this preview. If you do, definitely check out reactroots.com to learn more. Here it is. Let's jump into the first one, which is describe what TypeScript is and its relation to JavaScript. So first, let's define some computer science terms that you typically see when, when people are describing TypeScript. So these are, are like a general terms that can be applied anywhere, and then we'll apply them to TypeScript. So first, let's talk about a superset and a subset. And this is an image showcasing a superset and a subset. So in mathematics, a superset is a set that includes all the elements of another set and may have additional elements as well. For example, if a set contains the numbers 1, 2, and 3, set B contains the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, set B is a superset of set A because it contains 1, 2, and 3. And so visually it looks like this. So A is 1, 2, 3, B is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, but because all of A is in B, uh, A is a subset and B is the superset. So in this example, A is a subset of B because it has all of the things that B has. The, these are the definitions of superset and subset. Let's use them to talk about uh, to talk about TypeScript. So TypeScript is a statically typed superset of JavaScript. So I'll remind you of the of the definition. So uh, B is the superset because it contains A, right? So TypeScript is a superset that contains JavaScript, um, and for the, from the same definitions, JavaScript is a subset of TypeScript, uh, which means, and this is important to note and why I talk about this up front, any valid JavaScript is valid TypeScript. Um, and if we want to see that in a nice little logo diagram, that's it. So all valid JavaScript is valid TypeScript. And also, uh, if you want to feel good about yourself, you basically already know like 80% of TypeScript, maybe not 80%, you know a large percent of, of TypeScript already if you know JavaScript. Um, and I think that's important for your mental model when working with TypeScript because at the end of the day, TypeScript is going to just get turned into JavaScript so keep that in mind. So any JavaScript you write is essentially valid TypeScript, but then we can add some extra things on top of it to, to make it TypeScript. <laughs> um, here's another general term that's kind of used throughout computer science. It's called static program analysis. Uh, so in computer science, static program analysis or static analysis is the analysis of computer programs performed without executing them. In contrast to dynamic program analysis, which is performed on programs during their execution. So this is a mechanism of analyzing computer code, source code, without actually running it. So we're, the, the, the programs actually look at the syntax and they can evaluate if something it has gone wrong or, or, or they can uh, de determine issues without actually running the code. Um, and this is what TypeScript is. So uh, TypeScript is static type checking. So TypeScript itself is a static type checker and it detects errors in our JavaScript without running it. So we're going to talk about this and I'm going to try to drive this home. There is no TypeScript runtime. The only runtimes we have are for JavaScript. TypeScript is just a little bit extra. Um, but we have to turn it into JavaScript to even use it. Yeah, so that's a, that's a good comparison. So Anthony is saying, uh, is it that also how ESLint works? Yes, ESLint is a static analysis tool because ESLint does not run your code. It just looks at the source code to determine issues like missing semicolons or using the wrong times of, kinds of brackets. So that, I think that is a good way to even think about TypeScript. I feel like some of the more diehard TypeScript fans are probably like, this is a horrible definition, but th this is this is, this is is what TypeScript is. You may not think about it like this, especially if you've been writing a TypeScript for a very long time, but TypeScript is basically just like a better ESLint. It has more on top of it uh, than ESLint, but it's a similar kind of tool, yeah. So that is what TypeScript is, and that's how you can think about it. So to review, TypeScript is a superset um, that includes JavaScript. Any valid JavaScript is valid TypeScript, and TypeScript is a static type checker. That's what it is. All right, any thoughts, comments, questions, criticisms before we move on to how TypeScript actually works? This is a great question from Muli. So uh, uh, Muli, Jack, is saying, um, so TypeScript, 
can TypeScript help at all with types at runtime? The answer is no. We're going to dive into this, but no. If you want runtime type checking, you need a separate library for that. Uh, and we'll talk about some of the libraries. Yeah, if it runs, it's valid JavaScript. <laughs> Um, so Muli is asking, can it help protect against bad API responses that aren't the correct type? It can't. You can define a type that represents the response from an API, and that will help with static analysis of your code to make sure that you're accessing the correct properties and everything. But at compile time, all of those types get stripped away. So if you want to validate an object to see that it adheres to a type, you need a separate library for that. All right, let's jump into it the TypeScript build cycle. So this is how, how all of this works. Uh, and again, first we're gonna have some definitions because we use those use these terms in how we're describing what TypeScript does. So a transpiler is a source to source translator or source to source compiler or transcompiler or transpiler. And it is a type of translator that takes the source code of a program written in a programming language as its input and produces the equivalent source code in the same or different programming language. TypeScript has a transpiler. They call it the compiler, and we're going to talk about how they're basically the same thing for the most part in a second. But that's basically what happens. You write TypeScript code. The TypeScript compiler just turns it into JavaScript, essentially by removing all of the extra TypeScript stuff that you added onto it. Uh, but let's also define compiler so we can compare and contrast the two. So in computing, a compiler is a computer program that translates computer code written in one program, pre programming language, the source language, into another language, the target language. So that definition right there kind of is what the TypeScript compiler is doing. The source language is TypeScript. The target language is JavaScript. The name compiler is primarily used for programs that translate source code from a high-level programming language to a low-level programming language. And so this is the part of the definition where it's like, well, in that case, TypeScript isn't exactly a compiler because it's going from high-level programming language to high-level programming language. Um, but at the end of the day, we use these chain terms interchangeably. So you can call it a transpiler. You can call it a compiler. I think, like, technically... It's a transpiler, but you're going to hear these terms thrown around and you can think about them like the basic idea of them is it takes source code and turns it into another thing. Uh, and typically the output of a compiler is like an executable program. So that's why like C and C++ has they have a compiler and they generate executables like actual code that can be executed. JavaScript is not executable. JavaScript is just source code and we run that source code through a, a runtime which can actually run the code, but we don't actually compile it to enter any intermediary target. Uh, I realize that's a bunch of, bunch of extra stuff. Really, all, your whole takeaway from that is you might hear me say transpiler, you might hear me say compiler. They kind of mean the same thing. Take source code from one place and convert it into some other type of thing. Okay, so this is the, the compilation uh, process for, for TypeScript. So essentially, TypeScript gives us extra developer features in our JavaScript that get removed at compile time. They are stripped away and you, the result is just JavaScript code. But it makes working with JavaScript code, or in this case, TypeScript code, much uh, more developer friendly because we can get errors about uh, how we're using specific types or libraries. Um, and Nico has a, has a comment in the Discord who says, TypeScript can help us with autocomplete. Absolutely. So if you have ever been using some JavaScript dependency and VS Code is telling you, hey, these are the properties that exist, that's because of TypeScript. Usually, you can also do it with JS doc comments in regular plain old JavaScript, but typically that's how we get a really good developer experience in our editor with uh, type completion is because the library that we're using potentially has type definitions uh, defined. We already talked about this, but TypeScript compiles to plain JavaScript. So you take that TypeScript code, you take away all these extra annotations, and the result is just JavaScript code. Um, and again, the TypeScript to JavaScript compilation process removes all of that type information. So let's see an example and let's talk about and show what we mean by a type annotation. So for instance, I have this add function and uh, aside from something happening on line one, this looks like regular plain old JavaScript code, right? But on line one, we say the argument A must be a number. So A colon number, this is a type annotation. And we're saying in my code, I only expect A to be a number. And then similarly, we're saying the argument B must be a number. So you would write TypeScript code that looks like this. You could call that code. TypeScript wouldn't complain. And it's like, yeah, it checks out. You're passing two numbers in. Beautiful. 
However, if you write code that doesn't adhere to those types, so for instance, we try to pass in a string instead of a number, the TypeScript compiler is going to yell at, yell at us. It's going to say, hey, string's not a number. You should probably fix that. Now, this is a bit of a contrived example, but that's basically what you're getting with TypeScript. Um, and so basically, we, we, take this, we take this source code, we run it through the TypeScript compiler, through the TypeScript compiler, and it just spits out JavaScript. And you'll notice really the only difference between the original one and this one is that it doesn't have type annotations anymore, right? So line one doesn't have A should be a number, B should be a number, because that's not valid JavaScript. So it removed that and, and spit out the code here. Now, uh, this code will still technically run, right? Like it's it's possible to add a number and a string in JavaScript. JavaScript's not gonna complain about that. Um, so technically, if you don't have the right settings enabled, the TypeScript compiler will still spit out this code even though there was a type error right here. So that's also important to note is like depending on your settings, you can actually, uh, TypeScript will, will still compile things even if there are type errors. Um, and and sometimes you sometimes you want that sometimes you don't and so when we talk about configuring the compiler i'll show you some settings you can use to basically say we shouldn't even make it here if if you find a type error like this stop everything and make sure that my developers fix it the developers on my team fix it yeah so just to reiterate to run typescript code we have to convert it to javascript first so like there is there is nothing that exists that can take this code and run it Everything out there that is able to run TypeScript code has to convert it into JavaScript first. So we convert it to JavaScript, and then we can run it in some kind of runtime like the web browser or in like Node.js or something like that. Brian asks, if that function was being called in a loop uh, using API data, and it sends a character where it should be a number, would TypeScript catch that since that is happening at runtime? No, it wouldn't. So ba basically, um, the only errors that TypeScript can catch are errors in, in your source code. So if something were to create a type error at runtime, TypeScript is not going to catch that. So um, I'll show you later on some examples of how we would do that. So basically, if some data appears that potentially um, would, wouldn't, wouldn't adhere to like our types in our, in our code, um, how, how we can, how we can ca potentially catch that error. So yeah. And, Again, I'll show you more examples and hopefully it'll make a bit more sense as we move along. But basically, that's the way to think about TypeScript is it is just a development tool. It is a tool that makes writing JavaScript code uh, easier because it will provide hints and annotations that you typically don't get with just JavaScript. So that's really the, the main way to think about TypeScript. It's a developer tool. Um, we could write our code without it and and. Uh, like, of course we can, like it just turns it into JavaScript anyways, but it gives us a, a better developer experience. And typically uh, it's it's a, a much better developer experience if you're working on a large team, right? Because if uh, someone else on your team wrote this function, but they didn't add a comment to say what A and B were supposed to be, um, now that you have these type annotations, it's going to tell you the moment you call the function, it'll be like, hey, this is the type, uh, this is the signature of the function, and these are the types that we're expecting. So you don't even have to talk to that other developer, like, oh, what did you intend here? Or you don't even have to look at the source code to be like, oh, well, I can determine that that is actually adding two numbers together. Um, basically, by having all of these type annotations, TypeScript helps you with that. Um, so again, to run TypeScript code, you got to convert it into JavaScript first. Uh, and TypeScript does not affect the runtime behavior of JavaScript. Um, and it does not provide runtime type checking. We already talked about this, but it only provides compile time type checking. Now, I, I, I don't have a diagram for this, but basically there are, there are like two different processes for like what happens with our code when we're using something like TypeScript. There's a compilation process. That's the process of taking the source code in TypeScript and turning it into JavaScript. And then there is the runtime. And the runtime is when the code is actually running. So like when you're running a, a, a React app or running a program in your, in your, console, in your console with Node.js, that's runtime. Runtime is separate from compile time. Uh, and TypeScript is only compile time time checking. It doesn't do anything during the runtime and there is no runtime. So they don't provide any extra libraries. Um, there isn't a TypeScript specific framework Basically, all of they prov all they provide are type annotations and ways of describing types 
so that we can get a, a better developer experience. Um, and so this leads to the question that a lot of people ask if you're a beginner. Um, so should I learn JavaScript or TypeScript first? And the answer is you should learn JavaScript first. Now, you could you could jump into TypeScript pretty early, but I think the main issue as a beginner is it can be very hard to, to differentiate, is this a TypeScript problem or is this a JavaScript problem? So that is why I do suggest you should already know JavaScript before learning learning about TypeScript because you're going to come across an issue like, um, how do I sort the, the numbers in a list with TypeScript? Like you might try Googling, how do I sort the numbers in a list with TypeScript? And the answer is, well, you just do it the same way you would do it with JavaScript and then add some type annotations uh, onto it. So th this is a piece of the TypeScript documentation uh, that basically breaks down um, that bit what I just said, where essentially uh, all of your questions are typically JavaScript questions unless it comes, to, comes down to a question about how do you express a specific type um, or, or do various things with TypeScript because everything else is just JavaScript code. Um, and so, yeah, their, their bolded item here is TypeScript is JavaScript's runtime with a compile time type checker. Uh, so that is that is what I recommend. Um, I would say if you probably if you have like at least a month or two of experience with JavaScript, you can probably start learning TypeScript. But any time before that, it is going to create some some confusion. Um, and I, I think you can you can probably see a theme in the <laughs> React Roots course is like I am very clearly trying to separate the ideas of all these things that we're learning that we use with React because I know for a lot of beginners it can be very confusing like when you see import syntax and arrow functions and then type definitions and props and if you don't have a good mental model of what each of those things are it can be very hard to debug so yesterday we kind of gave you the mental model of uh, like modern JavaScript. So we talked about modules. We talked about modern syntax. All of that is JavaScript. That's not TypeScript. That's not React. That's just JavaScript. Today, we're talking about TypeScript and type annotations. That's just TypeScript. And then tomorrow, we're going to talk about React. Uh, so having a clear distinction of all three of those, those concepts uh, in your head also helps with debugging and, and working through problems because you know, well, is this a JavaScript problem? Is this a TypeScript problem? Is this a React problem? Etc. Hello again. Thanks for watching this preview of my React Roots course. If you enjoyed this and you'd like to learn more, visit reactroots.com. Also, if you disagreed or agreed with anything that I said in this video, please leave a comment. I'd love to start a conversation. All right, see you in the next one.